I am designing a longboard. But before we design anything, we need some research to back it up and something that leads the direction of the design. My name is John Jordan, and this is The Design Process. So, just in case you're not familiar with longboarding, it's pretty simple. Longboarding is just another style of skateboarding with longer boards, bigger wheels, and different designs of decks that would accompany for different styles of longboarding. And those styles of longboarding could include downhill, bombing, free ride, freestyle, cruising, carving, dancing, and even some people like to use it for transportation. So the main thing that I was looking for from these uh, interviews was diverse opinions and different backgrounds. I wanted to talk to people who were beginners, intermediate, experts, skateboarders, and even people who haven't even gotten into the sport but are very interested in it. This is so I could find certain you know, keywords and phrases that people would say over and over again, like the trucks need to be improved, the wheels need to be improved, what about the deck? And this helps me narrow down my design direction on what I'm going to add in the future. So I had some assumptions about the sport before I did any of the interviews. The first assumption that came to my mind was I thought that people chose longboarding after they were done with being a skateboarder and I was like, okay, I wanna try something that is more, um, more relaxing and it's less dangerous. I don't have to be pulling off tricks here and there. So yeah, something that's less uh, harmful to the body. From what I found out, this wasn't exactly true. Most people got into longboarding through friends and family. They were seeing videos of people doing these really cool rides and awesome tricks off of it, stunts and everything. And then some people even like had video games that inspired them to actually pick up the board. Maybe it was just because me personally, I used to be a skateboarder and I actually said, you know, I just want to be a longboard because it's, it's a lot less riskier and I need my hands to work. So moving on to the next one, longboarding is dynamic in intensity. If you want to go around and just do, you know, simple cruises, nothing to, nothing to do special and just, you know, relax and just enjoy the breeze, that's fine. And you can also go up to 70 miles per hour down a freaking hill. If you're able to do that, more power to you. My God, there's some crazy videos out there of people actually doing that. This one was pretty much true. There was a lot of people who just said, like, I like to ride with my friends, not really doing that, that many crazy, like, you know, stunts and tricks or going really uh, fast speeds. But there was one guy who, uh, who definitely did a lot of that stuff and even explained to me that this board is just like for cruising. It's set up for cruising and explained completely to me, like, there's a reason why you fell down those uh, a couple of years ago. So thank you for that information. And one of the last assumptions that I made about the longboard was that some people just like to use it for a little small form of transportation. This was actually true with one of the interviews I did with someone called Claire. Kind of like dropped on you. Yeah, table. it's like, why not? You know, it's fun. Like, go out, enjoy the weather. Um, Definitely, yeah. Great transportation to get like from point A to point B. For sure, so. for sure. Hmm. Seems like a great way to save some gas. On to some insights. So one of the questions I would ask was, if you could have one right now, a longboard or an electric longboard, what would you have? And what really surprised me was out of the nine people that I talked to and interviewed, only one person said they'd be down for an electric longboard. Everyone else was just like, no, 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 you're taking out the main factor, like, I want to push the board, you're taking away that analog feeling, that kind of, con that, fi that physical exercise connection to the board, and it's like, I kind of, I, I really like, uh, I like actually interacting with the board, not the, not just riding the board. One of my interviewers uh, definitely described this uh, more in, more in, more in depth, I would say. I've used them. I've rode electrics and everything. I think it's its own category. I, I definitely think if you're gonna ride a board, just ride, you know, push a board, ride one. Uh, electric, you, you know, it's riding something. So you, 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 know, you skate a skateboard, basically. I would also ask, like, what are you looking for in a longboard? What are you looking for when you want, want to purchase a new one? And a good chunk of people, I'd say about maybe like three people, would uh, say that, hey, I actually prefer the functionality over the design that comes second you know they do like the board to look cool but they're really focused on the gear and making sure that that the gear is 
set up and made particularly for the style that they're going for, whether there be uh, carving, cruising, or downhilling. When it came down to asking people, what do you think should be improved on the longboard? There was quite a lot of information. So I got a little bit of a list here. We got wheels, helping beginners, more control with the kicktails, train, uh, terrain and off-roading, boards for dancing and tricks, sustainable board material, uh, more safety more safety for speed control on electric boards, improving the stop technique or when to stop, how to carry it, and weight. So that being said, not everyone was kind of agreeing on what needed to be improved uh, from back to forth. It was usually just, uh, it was usually on uh, a custom basis. It depends on who the person is and how they're how they approach uh, longboarding on, on that. But that actually helps me in a sense because it gives me uh, more of a broader area and where I can design and where I can add my influence on the board. The brand I would be choosing for this product would be Quest Boards. The main reason why I'm choosing Quest is because they have a lot of ambition in their designs. Quest has a lot of boards to choose from and a lot of designs to choose from, and they're not afraid of actually branching out and trying to play with the shape, especially in the tail end. The tail ends, they're a little bit kind of unique to um, other brands. I've taken a look at other brands and they all, they look like pretty good boards, but they all very look, they look very standard. Quest stands out because they're actually trying to push the design just a little bit. Also, another thing to say is Quest is one of the few brands that I found that actually sells traditional longboards and electric longboards. So it leads me to believe that they're more open to playing with both ideas instead of just sticking to one category. Okay, so we have all this information, we have a brand, but who exactly am I designing for? I am designing for someone who is a casual longboarder, not one, not someone who is just a complete beginner or not even a full-on expert. Yeah, something in the mid-ground, someone who likes, you know, just cruise around with friends, something, you know, just standard uh, riding around or maybe using it for a small piece of transportation in their little area or city. It sounds like this would be perfect for a college kid who just doesn't have a car and they just moved into a new city. You need this longboard that I'm going to design for you. So here are my final statements that I'd like to make from this research and how I might go with the direction of the design. So how might we design a hybrid longboard that kind of combines the features of a traditional longboard with an electric longboard? How might we design a lo an electric longboard for people who are more traditionalist, more old school? How might we take the electric longboard and, you know, aim it towards that crowd? And the last one, how might we uh, maintain this balance of design aesthetics and functionality on the board? Which one is probably going to take over? Are we going to have a 50-50? Let's see how it goes down the road. So I want to thank you for watching the video all the way to the end. I really appreciate it. This is a new style of reporting research, and I'm trying to feel it out and see if I like it or not. Um, so leave some comments in the uh, leave some comments below if you have any uh, tips or any uh, tricks or anything like that. Like the video if you like it, dislike it if you dislike it, and uh, thank you for joining the first stage of the design process. I will see you later.